Okay, the first thing you'll notice in the Leap 2.0 is going to be the user interface is completely different. We overhauled this, make it look a lot nicer, a little bit better on the eyes. And uh, this screen that you see here is brand new. We call this the Customers tab. We have divorced the customers from the estimates um, in the main menu. So before you still go into the estimates and you would add your customer first, and then you start working on your estimate. Well, now you can't even get into the Estimates tab without adding a customer first. So if I was to tap on Estimates or any other section that requires a customer, customer to be added, it's going to give me that warning and make me select my customer first. Uh, this screen you'll notice on the left hand side is displaying today's appointment. So this will connect directly to the CRM if you have that integration or my calendar. However your appointments show up now in Leap, they will also show up uh, in today's appointments in Leap 2.0. Uh, the little info button works the same as it does now. If I click info, it'll give me some notes from the CRM. If I click the little car icon, it will allow me to do the navigation. And if I actually tap on the appointment, which I'll do in a second, it will take me to start to create an estimate. On the right hand side, you'll see these are all my recent estimates. So anything that I've worked on uh, will show up here. I can select this and continue working on it. Um, but it also allows me that if I click this little info button, it will give me my lead results. So if I resulted the lead, through Leap, this will make it so that um, I can see what leads I have resulted, and if I didn't result them, it's going to pop up and show me no notes. So I could go back in time and look at all my previous estimates that I have created, and of course you can search them as well. So if I go here and just type in like John, hit search, it's going to pop up with a little thing which you should be used to if you ever searched estimates in Leap before. This pretty much works the exact same way, just a little bit uh, different user interface. You could tap on any appointment from any one of these screens that I showed you, and this one I'm going to select this Steve Irwin appointment and now I'm ready to start creating my estimate so my customer went down here at the bottom if you see bottom of the main menu from any screen I'm at I can actually tap on this hit edit customer and it will pop up so that I can uh, go ahead and add some info uh, change the address change the name add a spouse if, if I wish um, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and start creating an estimate. This is really didn't change much uh, when I come into, let's say, my roofing section. All my integrations work. This screen should look very familiar. The only difference is if we've moved the quantity button here on the left-hand side and um, cleaned up the user interface a little bit. I'm going to use a, a, a hover report. So let's pull one of these in. Oh, hold on. My token's expired on that. Let's do an eagle view. Hit search. Just select this one and then all my measurements will populate there and uh, I'm just going to hit done for now so that brings me to this screen where I have packages so your packages will work just like normal anything that you created already and are already used to using is going to work in the leap 2.0 version so my packages are nothing is different here uh, however uh, if you guys remember there's always a custom package at the very end whether you have packages or not and um, this one we're calling it a default package 29827 under the hood what it's doing is it's selecting the first option out of every uh, measure sheet item uh, but what's cool about this is let's say that I wanted you know I have this Owens Corning duration shingle if I wanted to make my own custom package I can tap on this this is a completely different screen if you ever do a custom package in the current version of Leap that you're using you'll notice that you swipe between all the different options well now you can see the options here and I can select them you know and you can see the price points of each of the options and I can turn things on and off so let's just turn these three things off and let's uh, say that this is a, a package that the insurance carrier for this for this particular customer is going to pay for so I'm going to uh, save this one and I'm going to name this package insurance um, only so I could give the customer price, hey, this is everything, only the insurance is going to pay for this. And you notice it added another package in there with me. So I have my default package, which comes, you know, standard. And then I have every other package that I added. So I go through those. And then I have a package that I made specifically for this homeowner. Now what's cool is if I wanted to go back and do, you know, something off of this one, I could make a whole nother custom package. So I could go here, flip these three things off, and I could put, you know, upgrades only. And now I have another package that's added there. What's also new about this version is these packages will save 
with the customer or with the estimate so that when I pull them up at a later date, I will have all of these stored with it. Because in the current version, if you ever selected off of the custom package and came back to it, you will lose all of those changes. Well, now you can not only have multiple custom packages, but those uh, changes are going to save with the estimate. So when you pull it up, you can toggle between all of the different package that you, packages you have created. I'm going to do another example of this. I'm going to go into Windows and I'm going to add, uh, let's just do here, hit this little add button. I'm going to show you guys a little trick as well. So I'm going to do a quantity of, uh, we'll do seven, seven of these. And um, I want to click on this. It's highlighted in red. Let me know that I have some additional fields that I got to add to. Now, let me go back for a second. One of the changes in this you'll notice is that there used to be a green arrow right here, and the green arrow would highlight if there was upcharges associated with this. Um, and then if you would tap on the cell itself, it would take you to the additional details that you could fill in. Well, we have combined those two. So all you have to do now is tap on the cell, and it will take you to your additional details and your upcharges all in one view. So I can toggle between these, and I will say, okay, we're going to tag this one as a dining room, and then the size We'll just put some random size in here. Um, we'll leave the additional details blank. I'll go in here to the up charges. I'll turn that one on and add a grid pattern. So we'll say six over six. And then I'm going to hit done. Now, a little trick uh, that you can do like if I have seven of those and I wanted to um, make them all unique, I could hit split. I just swipe left on the row and hit split. And uh, now I have seven items with a quantity of one. So uh, just for um, demo purposes. I'm going to go through and just change the room in each of these. So I'm going to make this one the kitchen. I'm going to leave that one the dining room. We'll make this one the bathroom. And we'll make this one a foyer. And we'll make this one a sunroom. Okay. Now we have a couple different rooms worth of windows to work with. I'm going to hit done. And now I have my packages, again, just like normal, nothing on this changed. But let me show you how what you know selling windows could do with custom packages. So I could have a homeowner says, hey, I really like the 3000 series. We're not ready to spend that amount of money. Give me a price on all the windows except for the three in these particular rooms. So I could click on this and I could say, okay, well, let's hold off on the ones in the sunroom and the foyer and the bathroom. And then I could hit done. I can name this package without three rooms. And then now I have, uh, okay, Mr. And Mr. Jones, it's $4,433. Now I could, of course, go back to all the windows, but she said, okay, well, give me the same windows, but in the 1000 series, well, how much would that be? Okay, Mr. And Mr. Jones, let me figure that out. I'm gonna hold off on this one, this one, and this one. Oops, I'm gonna hit done. And I'm gonna name this without three rooms, 1000 series save okay so now again quickly i did that 2900 4433 or i could go to just my regular packages 5076 62 and 77. Uh, down at the very bottom this works the same the only difference is we put that little um, page indicator to let you know how many of these taps you have and which one you're on just a little visual indicator um, and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it for the the packages part one of the other cool things that I wanted to show you is the custom product this is completely changed in leap and if you notice down at the very bottom right above finance option is usually where the custom product section would live well custom product is completely gone now and that's because we have rebuilt this from from scratch uh, we took a lot of feedback from customers from our sales reps from our support team um, you know, and, and put it all together, our UI UX team, and this is what we came up with. So if I wanted to add a line item that's not directly in the price guide, I could hit this little add section button at the top. When I add section, it's just like any of my other categories, you give it a name. So I'm going to name this, um, uh, we'll call it garage floor coding. I want to hit next and then it asks me to add my line items so I can just type them in manually so I could do um, remove existing items deliver storage unit period install oh, not install hold on what am I talking about let me get that. remove existing items out of garage and store in storage unit period We'll do a quantity of one, and we'll say that's, um, I don't know, 
Um, now, what's really cool is I could, uh, if I w let's say that I sell this often, I could just hit add the catalog and give it a category. So we'll call this category garage floor coating. And now when I save this, I'll do save and add another. But what's cool now is if I come here to my catalog, any items that I've added to the catalog are going to show up here. So my garage floor coating, I could just come in here. It has uh, my price and everything ready to go. All I have to do is add a quantity. So I'll do a quantity of one, hit save. Now obviously I'm going to have two of the same item here. Uh, but you know it drops them down here into the bottom, into a row that says garage floor coating and um, remove existing items and uh, you know I have two of those rows you can swipe and delete those I can uh, duplicate this so we'll just duplicate this and call garage floor coating 2 save then you know it duplicates down at the bottom you can go in here and then click on that change just this one line item uh, maybe it's a thousand dollars and then you can go, I'm not going to, for time's sake, I'm not going to go through and add a ton of them, but you know, maybe you want to move all of these up, like one up to that category. You see how your price updates. Maybe say, okay, let's hold off on these two items. How much would that be? Let's hold off on this entire category. How much would that be? Um, you know, it just gives you a lot of flexibility where, uh, I mean, theoretically, you you know, all this stuff is great to have, but, um, you know, you can kind of build out a price guide uh, for, you know, items that you sell uh, often uh, without having to go into the back end dashboard. You can do it all right here from uh, the iPad. Your finance option section, this works the same. It's just a completely different user interface. If I click in the here, I can type in an amount, let's say it's 10,000. And once I hit done, it will show me all of the uh, monthly costs, which are the numbers in black. And the numbers in red is how much the fee is uh, from the lender to the contractor. And I can just scroll through these and see all of my plans kind of at a glance before you have to bounce back and forth between all of the different sections or to all the different categories. And then you can select one of these and it will add it down here at the bottom. So uh, that is our estimates section, uh, completely overhauled with the custom products. And we have the new options with uh, uh, custom packages. So we're really excited about that. And the initial feedback that we received has been great. So I'm going to go ahead and save this for now. Um, what's also cool is uh, our user interface. I'm just going to bounce around the app a, a little bit. So let's come here to our resources section. Nothing really uh, crazy here, just a little bit uh, updated user interface. Uh, we'll come here to our credit application section. Uh, you can click into one of these lenders. So let's say, I don't know, we'll click into Interbank and you can see their application. A little bit different than what it used to look like. Um, I like this look a whole lot better. Uh, than what we currently have. I think it's a lot cleaner. Scroll through. Uh, your price guide, nothing really much different here. It all works the same, just updated user interface. Um, but now I want to jump into contracts. Uh, contracts, completely different uh, user interface, a little bit different workflow. So one of the things, uh, one of the biggest feature requests that we've gotten, or I'd say biggest, one of the uh, feature requests we've re we received the most over the last four or five years um, was when you're selecting these templates, that the order that you select them matters. So if I select roofing, I select windows, I select my Provia doors, and I select the payment page, right? But then let's say that I forgot and I'm like, oh man, I needed to add siding. But maybe you already hit next and you filled a bunch of stuff out and you wanted this payment details page to always be last. Well, now when I select all of my pages, I hit next and it gives me a, a order. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, my siding, I actually wanted to move to the second to last position and then I save and continue, all right? Let's go back for a second because let's say I took siding out and I went in here and I filled a bunch of stuff out. So I'm in here, you can see it's a completely different user interface. It basically mimics the same thing as the, um, the credit application section I just showed. But as I scroll through this, you fill this whole thing out. This, will, this is all compatible with your existing documents. The only difference is going to be the user interface. And as I fill this out, here's my little sketch pad. I'll go through and draw on that, hit done. And down here at the bottom, this is how I navigate between all of the different sections. Three, uh, my Provia doors, let's type in an order number. Wait for that to load, okay, perfect, hit done. And then, I have, and then I'm like, oh man, I forgot the siding. Let me go back and add the siding. But I want this payment details page to be last. Now, before, if I filled out the payment details page, all of that information would be lost. So actually, let me just go in here and fill it out real quick. So I can come in here and put 5,000 uh, cash deposit. 
I don't know, a thousand for my payment, we'll just do cash. And that's good. Then I forget the siding, but I don't want to lose all that information. I can come in, tap the siding, move the siding in its correct position, save and continue, go to my siding page, and fill this thing out. I don't have to lose all the information that was previously filled out. Once I hit next, this will stitch all the pages together. And then this is all the, exactly the same as we had before. So you just tap like this, hit the sign button, and then you do like that. Now, one of the surprises that I have is everything that I just showed you is also going to be doable on the iPhone now. So uh, all of my contracts, any documents, signing them on the uh, on the phone can all be completely done with a um, with an iPhone. So actually, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to try to switch my screens real quick, and then I'm going to jump back in on my phone, and I'm going to show you this exact same template, but done on an iPhone, where currently you can't do any of this on an iPhone.